Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are going to learn three of the most powerful techniques to take you from price to profit because so many people are uncomfortable with how to price their services. So this is going to be a game changer today. So I want to welcome with me Michelle McGlade. She is a best-selling author of the book Unstoppable and I actually met her because she's a podcast host and the name of her show is Making the Maven. It's a very exciting show and my episode actually just aired on Monday so we're going to make sure and put that episode in the comments for you. So Michelle is a business savvy healer for healers. So what that means is she is the person who can support you through your healing business. She will help you through all kinds of unnatural elements of entrepreneurship that healers go for as they set up their shop and let their gifts loose on the world. So I just wanna say hello really quickly to Michelle. Hello, Mary. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. Michelle and I have been having all kinds of pro uh, fun <laughs> laughing as we're getting ready to set up and, and we didn't have any technical troubles. So that's amazing. So what is your, let's um, set up the problem. Sometimes, let's see, we've got, why don't you just take that away? What's the problem we're solving today? You know, I think that when it comes to, well, I certainly work with the healing community, but this is really uh, an issue across any small business owner, women in particular, there's a struggle around, um, you know, what to price your services at. Like you feel like, especially I think when you're brand new, you feel like I'm not good enough. And so I need to maybe discount my services so that people will want to come to my place of business. Or if you're even more seasoned, I see this showing up for seasoned business owners who haven't yet tackled their, their money story. Um, they feel like that when they're struggling, maybe like business has slowed down. Uh, maybe they don't have as many clients as they want. They feel like that, you know, if they just would lower their price, you know, like maybe if I just go down $5, then more clients like <laughs> are gonna start flooding in the door magically. So yeah, <laughs> this is a predicament across most businesses. I've noticed um, people feeling um, even like maybe they shouldn't charge for their services or, yeah. you know, they, they just feel bad about it. And so that's just something I've spoken to a lot of people about. And one of the reasons I'm really excited to have you today. So what is your personal knowledge on this topic and where did you learn that from? Well, I learned it through um, personal experience, one, right? Um, I've been in business for myself for, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't know, a lot of years, well over five years. Um, and I had my own, you know, brick and mortar businesses and, and had to put my services out there, you know, like anybody else and struggled with these exact concepts. I don't want people to feel like they're alone in this journey. Um, mm -hmm. I've gone through it myself, maybe not to the extent, like you're saying there are actually some some people out there who don't want to charge at all. That wasn't my issue, right? But um, yeah, like being scared to raise my price five dollars, or you know, charging you know, charging more than the average for other service providers in my area. So I've certainly had my own journey um, in doing this. And then now that I've transitioned away from my own clinics and my own um, service-based business locally, and I have the online model coaching other healers, I've seen this with hundreds. I mean, this is a predicament for, I would say, 100% of the people that I talk to day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I had, I when I was at a breathwork seminar last summer, I met this uh, yoga teacher. She owned a yoga studio and she would struggle with people wanting to have free memberships. Yeah. And so we would brainstorm some ideas like, well, what can you do to maybe offer, give them a free pass and then, you know, give people opportunities to see what you're about. But at the same time, you cannot logistically run a business. You can't pay your own bills if yeah. you're not pricing accordingly, which is 
is why I love the title from price to profit because yeah. you can you can actually become unprofitable if you're not charging accordingly for your services you know there's all kinds of things like you've got to pay you've got to pay your taxes you've got to pay your utilities you've got to pay other employees sometimes you're even paying for like more training so that you can become even more valuable yeah so that's um, that's exactly what I see with people when they're scaling and they actually maybe they like for me I'm a licensed acupuncturist so you know if you started out maybe at $70 a session you're you are growing your business maybe you're adding like front desk support maybe you're getting administrative services outsourcing billing but you're not raising your price accordingly as you're scaling I'll tell you a, a story I um I was one year into my business and I I had a great great start to my business so I did really well I got it to six figures in, in under a year which is what every practitioner is dreaming of but I was exhausted like I was exhausted and I think I was like at $80 a session and I hired I finally hired a business coach actually two guys they were anyways that's another story but they were hilarious and the first thing they said to me like in the first 10 minutes they said Michelle you've got to raise your price and we want you to go to 125 which is a huge jump I think my face went white and <laughs> I like I can just still feel like in my body like the the constriction like oh my god I'm gonna lose all my clients they're crazy and I took a leap of faith and I listened to them and I know most people would you know have a really hard time making that big of a jump but I listened to what they had to say because I was really confident in what I was offering and Let's I did it play a quick game yeah <laughs> like everybody watching like tell me your using the using the little emojis or the smiley faces like tell me your first reaction you would have if somebody <laughs> told you to raise your session price from seventy dollars to 125 I mean that's like a more than a fifty percent dump so yeah. your services are if somebody just told you to increase it by that percentage like what would be your reaction would it be like <gasps> wow face would it be like hearts like I love that I'm gonna make more money would it be like angry like I'm angry with the person who suggested that to <laughs> but anyway yeah so share that share that with us I would love to know your guys's reaction for that and please Michelle carry on thank you very yeah, much yeah no that's a great idea I'd love to hear what people say because like I said this was I mean easily seven ten years ago and like I can still feel it in my stomach like how afraid I was but uh -huh. I'll, t I'll tell you this I um I took a leap of faith I really put my trust in them and I was really desperate to change how my business was being run and so I did it and no I mean a few people a few people went what some people said it's about time and maybe one or two people found somebody else that they wanted to work with my business did not suffer one bit at all and I, as the comments come in I'll be interested to see because now I've gone through this exact same process the good news is is I can relate to anybody and their objections and their fears around it but I've gone through this exact same process like with 100% of my clients whether they're just starting out and they want to charge zero or they want to charge too little or we've got to up level them as they've grown in their business to a new price point they mm -hmm. all don't want to do it okay a hundred percent of them have that fear so that's what I think the comments are gonna say is like hell no I don't want to do that um, but I can also report they had the exact I mean I've coached hundreds of people they've had the exact response that I did personally when I raised my price some people said about time about time you did that other people kind of said oh I don't want to you know whatever but they kept coming and then just very few maybe one or two people said I'm gonna find somebody else and then you know the the uh, the increase in price that you got from the other people let's just let's just say this fact that more than absorbed the one or two oh, people yeah that you lost so okay if you're watching live please let us know where you're watching from in the comments I'd love to know and Michelle what is we're gonna go over three action steps today that the viewers can take to go from price to profit so let's talk about the very first one because I already know what it is and it's really good y'all what is it <laughs> You're gonna laugh at me because I'm like three action steps. What are they? <laughs> sometimes I, I sometimes I use like action steppy kind of language. So all right, this is number one, the number one most powerful tip, and I love this one, guys. It's so important. 
get clear on your credentials. So when you can list off like, I am a licensed massage therapist. I've got this certificate. Go, you take it away, Michelle. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I know exactly where you're going now. I'm like, what? Three tips? I don't know. <laughs> Love it. So, so, so here's the thing. Um, I'll, I'll just warm this up to set it up for you guys. The thing is that about pricing is that it makes you feel good. Like whether you're, you know, giving it away for free, five bucks off, you know, discounting, not raising the price. It's more about you, right? Like it's you. It's making you feel better about the scenario, but it's really not getting you results. And the issue is one of three things. Typically. You feel like um, undercharging or not charging because you don't see your own value. And that's where we're going here is that you really need to get more intimate with what you're bringing to the table for your clients. And the thing is, is that the value is not, I think we just say it, especially as experts, all the intuitive healers out there, they, they just look at like their credentials on a piece of paper that but it's so much more it's the years and years and years of experience and knowledge and putting all that together and how you're dealing with your clients that really is the true value that you bring for for them so what are some questions all right let's use me because you know yeah. i get to be the recipient of all these free trainings <laughs> what questions like, what if I'm looking at myself and I go, I don't really know what my credentials are. Yeah. You know, and, and I'll be honest here, like, that's one of the things that I've struggled with in my past, because in my business, I work in a, in a financial industry, and I would a lot of times be in a boardroom with people who had um, uh, masters or PhDs in finance, and I would feel very intimidated. Yeah. But like, I could still own the room because I had more experience than all of them, because I have 20 years of experience in, in my industry. But like, tell ask me some questions that would that would inspire me to tell you my credentials yeah so i think um you know beyond just like the the first one is sure like what are, what are what is your education but we'll we'll skim over that but like okay. think about the education that you do have we all do have credentials you know like you're saying masters phds that stuff matters mm -hmm. how about you know mary how many clients have you worked with over the years me, I have over 4,000 clients. And um, I wanna say something about like the educational piece. Like even if you don't have a formal degree, one of the things that I actually, when I went into looking at the different organizations I belong to and added up the um, all the extra, I don't know what you call them, like CPUs or whatever, it was amazing. And I actually had the highest distinction in a collection industry, which is called um, like a scholar or something like that, because I'd had so many hours of built up of these like extra credit education hours. And so, yeah, to answer your question, I have over 4,000 clients, probably around 5,000. Wow. And I love, I love that you added that. It's not just how we define, you know, traditional education, CEUs, any sort of anything. I mean, did you take a class for fun on a, on essential oils or something? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> knitting, you know, you think that sounds silly, but you know, it depends on the clients that you're serving. It really just depends. Okay. So over 4,000 clients, um, how many years have you been, you know, working and interacting with clients? So um, in my own business since 1998, but truly in this business since I was 13. There you go. See, that that's what people underestimate. I've also been in the business world since I was 14. And, and the amount of experience in that time, I don't have anything official on paper, but a, it, you bring it to the table, right? You'd bring mm -hmm. that to the table. Okay, what about like major um, life events that you have gone through? Wow. Yeah. I mean, by the time you reach 40, you've got <laughs> a <incredible>, big list, <laughs> a pretty incredible list. And so, you know, even things like, as you know, like if you're a healer, because we're really focused on healers today, but like one of the things that came to mind is, um, you know, I had a VBAC. Mm. So like just the, the things and the preparations of having like a vaginal birth after cesarean, that was, that was kind of a big deal, especially in those days because I wasn't allowed to have any like medication or, you know, painkillers, that kind of thing. But yeah, so I have tons of life experience between like 
businesses that I've I've bought several businesses. I've actually really grown my um, entire business more through acquisition than I have through perhaps like traditional hiring a salesperson and bringing on clients. Yeah. So see, don't let's not skim over this because Mary okay. just said a lot. I mean, I would break this out if you were like literally making a list and I challenge everybody watching to make a list of 50 things. And I know, again, that makes you sick to your stomach. You like I don't have 50 things, but you do. I mean, Mary's like I'm just going to point out some other things. She's been uh, she's got uh, experience all the way back to just first starting and at age 13. So the number of years. Um, she's got a number of different degrees. She's not just started her own business. She started multiple businesses. She said she grew her business through acquisition. That's a very specific skill set. Not everybody knows how to do that. Um, she's talking about uh, a health challenge she had, but she didn't just talk about the health challenge. It's um, She talked about natural ways to do that. So mm -hmm. that's very specific as well. So don't just skim over. Like I'll tell you one of mine, uh, as a practitioner, I uh, really brought to the table, I broke my uh, leg ice skating. Okay, now let me tell you all the experiences I had just from that. I mean, having a major surgery, I didn't recover. I had a very difficult time being put under. I didn't recover well from all the drugs. Uh, I wasn't supposed to walk. So I wanted to make a full recovery. So I used all kinds of alternative forms of healing and traditional. So like just in that, all the different experiences and conversations I could have with a client in my practice was extremely valuable, extremely yeah. valuable. Because you learn so much, you know, like when you said I, I had a hard time with the drugs, I'm kind of the opposite. Like I'm like, bring on the drugs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's different experiences and well, value. It is. It's like people's um, comfort zone with being in or out of control. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like, it's you're right. You can learn a lot about a person just from from. OK, yeah. so you challenge your first homework piece. And I actually love this. Um, in addition to your list of credentials, make a list of 50 life experiences. And I could like go all neuro nerd on you and explain to you that when when you make this list of 50 things, um, it is actually going to do a tremendous thing for you in your in your neurology, which it is going to stimulate some of the triumphant areas of your brain. And it's going to make you feel extremely celebratory. So this is actually going to be a fun list to do, y'all. So get started right Away. It's so interesting. Like I came up with this, like over coaching, you know, hundreds of people. And I know that having a certain number does something to them, but I didn't know the neurology of it. Well, and it's not necessarily about the number, but it's that. No, um, no it's the, the, neuro, the, the neuro nerd part of it is that when you recall a past event, you're actually recreating the uh, chemical recipe that happened when the event took place. So that's, it's very healthy to do this. It's confidence building. I, that's what I see in my clients. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So are we ready to uh, move on to the second step, which is, well, I'll just let you do it unless you need me to. You got, no, you got to, like, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I sent you now, but I know it's good. And I'll know I'll be able to speak to it as soon as you remind me. Yeah, I love it. Okay. So the, and we might've covered it, but number two on my list is writing down five things you bring to the table beyond your credentials. Yeah, that's, yeah, we covered that. We covered that. No, so, but let's, let's just in case, cause it's an official step and I'm a, like a step-by-step -step girl. Okay. So tell me like, how can I capitalize on one of these things that I bring to the table? Yeah. So I'll give you my own personal example. I mean, a different one, but beyond the breaking leg. So you know, here I am, I'm a licensed acupuncturist, I've got my own clinic, my own business. And what I learned, you know, I came from corporate, okay, so I was 15 years in corporate America. And what I learned is that that you would think from a business perspective, that might help me grow my business, right. Mm -hmm. But what I learned is that piece of who I was, like just my personal experience, the way I carried myself now coming from corporate mm -hmm. was so different, is that that was a powerful tool for me to attract and retain clients. And right. so it helped me in my marketing. I would have never thought this. It helped me in my marketing. 
It helped me um, in understanding my target audience better and connecting with them. And it helped me to um, retain those clients and get them to refer people to me because I was so clear. Um, the wi the wor professional working women, they wanted to work with me. They, you know. One of the things I'm also hearing you saying too, it's like, um, I think that for a lot of people that are healers, you know, they might also be interested in writing books and building a platform. And this kind of piggybacks into when you are like building a personal brand, because when you work for somebody else, um, you know, you're really, it's all about like what that corporate culture is about. But when you're building your own brand, um, I see, I see people going through little pitfalls as well. Like I have a friend that just started an online jewelry business. And one of the things that I see her do, and I see lots of people do this, so I'm not trying to call out just like one friend, yeah. but I'll see people do this when they kind of start their own um, practice or their own, like their own shop. They'll say, we specialize, we do this, we do that. And I'm going, who's the we, honey? Cause it's you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but don't be embarrassed that it's you no. you know like if you're not a we don't say we because it actually seems kind of weird you yeah. know it's, it's a little awkward to say it's a we when it's just a you if you truly do have a team and you can say like my team does this then that's one thing but if you're saying like we sometimes it's like because you're a little embarrassed because you're a one-stop shop but people in today's world they love they love one stop mom and pops like it's it's coming back so strong and it's like really what america was built on originally so okay i just had yeah. to like add no my little... that's that's so good because this it almost this just ties into exactly what we're talking about like owning your value like owning that you are the expert and you have not just credentials but you have value that you're bringing to the table and to highlight that in your personal brand and to show it off like show mm -hmm. off all those aspects of you. Like at first, to be honest, I kind of hid that part about me. Right. And then I realized it was a superpower and it caused people to connect with me in a much easier way. Mm -hmm. And when I started to show that off, that was extremely powerful in getting and keeping clients. Yeah. So and, and price doesn't matter when they love and connect with you. It's, it's so true. You know, like if you're selling, if you're selling that bracelet online, you know, know that part of the reason that people are buying from you is because they like you. And, and like, you know, sometimes when I buy, I'll buy a piece of jewelry or something, like I got these earrings from a woman who made them um, when I was on a retreat in Hawaii. And honestly, the only reason I love the earrings is because like, it reminds me of the retreat. It reminds me of her. And it's like, I can feel her energy every time I wear them. Yeah. All right. So our third action step here for you all today is getting comfortable communicating beyond your credentials and incorporating all of you in your messaging, not all of we, but all of you in your messaging, marketing and sales conversion. And I got to be honest, I don't even know what sales conversion means. Oh, just like, you know, having a sales conversation and then converting them into a client. Oh, OK. So yeah. like you're OK, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what I mean by this is, um, you know, I've worked with so many people and, and, and this is where they struggle and I did it too. So like, hey, no, no skin off my back here, but like, hey, my name's Michelle. I'm a licensed acupuncturist. Acupuncture has been around for thousands of years and it helps move the chi and balance, you know, like boring snooze. <laughs> Right? Like, they Let me run away from you now. Uh, oh, and I have a master's and it took me three years and blah, blah, blah. Okay. You see how that, you know, you see mm -hmm. how that's not going to connect with people. There's and no so, hook. So, just like in the book business, we say talk about the hook, not the book. There you go. I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, and I'm just doing this on the fly, but maybe it's more something like, hey, my name is Michelle. I work with professional working women who want to re uh, restore that youthful glow. Um, something like that. So, so it's like, you know, so what you do guys, like, this is it. Like think about your target audience and what their, their biggest challenges are. Yeah. Right. So, um, I did this with a woman. I don't know if she's watching or not. My friend Becca, she is a, I love what she does. She's an autism coach and mm -hmm. she coaches young adult, adults on the spectrum. And she's actually on the spectrum herself. 
Well, um, I was teaching her like my words that work system. And like I told her, I said, well, what are some of the challenges that people talk to you about? And so we kind of did that. It's like, you know what? So my son is also on the autism spectrum. So it's like when you know, so let's say these three biggest pain points are hygiene, homework, and too much time on video games. Yeah. yeah. Those would be like my personal ones. So then like one way she could talk to me is like, you know what, I really help parents or teenagers of kids on the spectrum um, to help manage their time so that they can get their hygiene, you know, that we can, we can get acceptable hygiene goals so we can get all of our homework done and re learn how to manage that balance between time on the video games and time getting like responsibilities done. So like as a parent of somebody on the spectrum, my mind is going how much instead of like thinking, my mind is thinking about how much I would want those things. Yes. So, and especially being a woman who's now in my 40s, when she says, I help women, I help executive women, or I help overworked women um, restore their useful, youthful glow, well, like, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want that? I mean, think about, it. we make movies about that. Like, remember, remember Snow White, like the old queen? Yeah. You would have wanted your services, Michelle. <laughs> I don't know what her name was, but maybe we could give her a call. Yeah. <laughs> and and the key, just like to tie this back up, the key to doing this is one, to be, I mean, you're really authentically being you. You're leveraging the different aspects of your value beyond your education. You're communicating it in a way that speaks to your target audience and their deep desires. And when you do all of those three things, mm -hmm. guess what? What pricing the price is not the issue. <laughs> like the price, you can price however you want. You can go right up to, from seventy to one twenty-five, just like I did. And and listen, here's another like this is a Mary tip. Mary and Michelle's tips of the day here. <laughs> um, don't apologize for what you know. Do you notice that? Like, yeah. women apologize a lot. Now you're getting me oh, fired yeah. up. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've been fired up. Like I had, um, and I don't know if you, I had a, a lady that I was working with as an agent for some podcasting because we were, I was like my team and I, we were spending a ton of time just booking podcasts. Yeah. So I decided I wanted to like outsource this. And so, and you might know who I'm, I'm talking yeah. about, but, um, so I was talking to her and she was like, well, tell me about like what you do. And I don't know, I was like struggling. I couldn't yeah. come up with anything to say to her. And then finally, like I listen to her and I go, well, I can help people like you stop apologizing for your expertise. And she, and she went like, oh. she was like, yes, 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 I want you to do that. She's like, how can I do that? And then like, it was so awesome because we started talking about it and I was like, look, you're an expert. You have something to give me. Mm -hmm. So if you have like improvements for my media sheet, you know, tell me. And she goes, well, somebody really worked hard making that media sheet and I don't want to hurt their feelings. I'm like, what? No. Make me better. <laughs> Make me better. Right. Yeah. So like for someone like her, you know, I help online entrepreneurs present themselves in a fabulous way to highlight their talents or whatever. Like these are, these are really great. And if you want help with this, like you can throw some comments later cause we'll keep the video up and um, you just find out what those challenges are and you offer the solution and then you make that like your elevator pitch, you yes. know, like, and you don't want the elevator pitch to be more than 20 or 30 seconds cause people won't listen. Yeah. So, okay. So our, our, let's just go over what the quick takeaways are. And then Michelle has a fabulous free gift for you, which awesome. I am seeing the word mini course, which, so that's yes. awesome. Cause I want that. <laughs> okay. So the key things here is that pricing has, and, and you know, how you price your services and charging for your services and increasing your price has so much more to do to do with how you perceive yourself and your value than it does the other person. And I've proven that time and time again. So the, the three key elements for you and in really beginning to look at this is one, to own your own value, right? And how do you do that? I'm challenging you to take make a list of 50 things, 50 things about you beyond just your credentials that you bring to the table for your clients. 
And then the key thing here is to not show up and throw up your credentials, but to show up and communicate some of that value. You can't communicate all of it. So guess what? Choose the one or two things that speak to your target audience most powerfully, speaks to their desires and wants so that you can connect with them in a deeper way. And so that pricing doesn't matter and you can really price to profit in your business. Very good. All right. And then tell us about your tell us about your free gift, which we are having linked in our comments and then later we'll link it in the description. Perfect. So if this conversation is resonating for you, then I really encourage you to take advantage of the workshop. This is something actually I normally charge for. So it's uh, a gift I wanted to offer to Mary's audience or Mary, your audience, because I knew that we wouldn't get to everything. And this workshop, we talk about some of these things, but we're going you know, so much deeper, um, not just the, the ripple effects in your business of underpricing, but really helping you to kind of unchain yourself from that poverty mindset that you have and get you comfortable charging premium prices for your services. And what I love the most about this workshop, it's not just those conversations, but once we've got that foundation, I teach you how to take your income goal for next year and back into it so we start with the big goal and then we back into it and get you um, looking at and making sure that you're charging the right number, a premium price for your service so that you're reaching your goals. So this is really exciting. So you're telling me that in this free workshop, I'm going to be able, this is perfect time of the year, guys, yeah. because, you know, like even I'm thinking that like Megan, my business development director, like she's very goal oriented and she wants mm -hmm. to make like X amount of commission next year. Mm -hmm. And I think that this would work for her because she can put that number in and then you can, you're going to teach in this workshop how to reverse engineer yeah. and make that happen. And this is also going to help you with like, keeping on track, creating monthly or quarterly goals too. Yeah. So I really love that. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for um, joining with us today. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to um, watch this watch this back and uh, let us know if you have any questions. And Michelle, I cannot wait to work with you again. Thank you, Mary, for having me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. All right, bye-bye. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.